Hello everyone, I'm Shintaro Ono, work at Tokyo Medical and Dental University. Appreciate having this presentation in this symposium. Today, we would like to talk about inflammatory bowel disease associated with JAP deficiency can be cured by allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. This symposium in four years ago, we presented the outcome of transplantation for JAP deficiency. We updated the outcome and revealed the cure of inflammatory bowel disease by HACT in JAP deficiency. First, JAP deficiency is a rare inborn error of immunity, characterized by extreme vulnerability to EV virus infection. Clinical features include EV virus associated HLH, recurrent HLH, hypogamma, splenomegaly, and inflammatory bowel disease. HACT is the only curative therapy, however, its outcomes remain unsatisfied. We reported national survey for JAP deficiency in 2017, and the outcome of HACT was prominent. This year, we updated the outcome of HSCT for JAP deficiency. 26 cases are identified through Japanese Immunodeficiency Society. So, we sent spread seat questionnaires using Google Forms, which was anonymized and access restricted to physicians in charge. Fortunately, we got answers from all cases. In the study of 2017, probability of survival was 90%. This result was much better than previous international survey. In our survey, most patients underwent reduced intensity conditioning regimen, leak regimen. Leak regimen might greatly contribute to this result. And we assumed HLH control is also an important factor for successful transplant because more than half of patients developed HLH after transplantation. From this slide, I will talk about the survey of 2020. 21 pathogenic mutations from 26 patients are identified. The identified mutations are 12 nonsense mutations, 5 frame shift mutations, 3 spray site mutations, three large deletions, two missense mutations, and one in-frame deletion. All mutations are mapped in this figure. Next, in survey of 2020, survival probability was almost equal to survey of 2017. 22 out of 26 patients survived, so probability of survival was 85%. This shows patients' characteristics. Average age at HACT was age of 9.9. .9. 20 patients suffered from HLH before HACT, and 90 patients, 73% of patients had IBD before HACT. Obviously, IBD is a higher percentage than previous international survey, which was about 25%. In addition, IBD was an indication of HSCT in about 75% of patients. Thus, IBD is highly prevalent and severity of the disease is high enough to warrant HSCT. And uh, four patients underwent HSCT without remission of HLH. Next, this slide shows the information of transplantation. One patient had re-transplantation, and this patient count twice. The graft source was cold blood in five cases, related bone marrow in four cases, unrelated bone marrow in 16 cases, paternal bone marrow in one case, and paternal peripheral blood stem cells in one case. In HLA match, full match in 11 cases, one or more mismatch in 16 cases and nobody underwent mere ablative conditioning regimen. 
All patients except one case underwent reduced intensity conditioning. This is because that previous survey revealed leak regimen is superior to MAC regimen. In GVHD prophylaxis, most patients received a combination of tacrolimus, MTX, and cyclosporine. Notably, post-transplant cyclophosphamide, PTCY, was performed in two cases because they underwent hyper-identical HACT. In recent years, PTCY has been recognized as a potent method to prevent GVHD for HLA hyper-identical transplantation. And several studies suggested the safety of PTCY for pediatric pediatric and non-malignant diseases. And outcomes. 20 patients developed acute GVHD, including five cases of grade three and two cases of grade four. And three patients developed severe chronic GVHD. Average engraftment day was uh, 23. 46% of patients suffered from infection after HACT, and 61% of patients developed post HACT HLH. Remarkably, all patients improved IBD after HACT, except for one patient. This patient developed severe gut GVHD, and it was difficult to determine job deficiency related IBD or not. And 22 patients survived after HACT. Survival probability analysis using Wiscoxon tests revealed active HLH at the time of HACT is statistically significant risk for HACT for job deficiency, shown in left figure. On the other hand, etoposide administration in conditioning regimen and with or without post HACT HLH were not statistically significant. Probably, this is due to the appropriate, appropriate control of post HACT HLH using etoposide and dexamethasone palmitate administration. This slide shows multivariate analysis. Multivariate analysis revealed active HLH and HLA mismatch are the risk for HACT. HLA mismatch was not statistically significant in Wiscoxon test due to the low sample number, shown in left figure. But multivariate analysis indicated the significance in HLA mismatch HACT for job deficiency. In this study, two patients received post-transplant cyclophosphamide due to hyper-identical HACT. Notably, the result of PTCY was pretty good. Complete donor type chimeras were established, none of the patients developed chronic GVHD, and the patients are alive well with performance status zero. So PTCY could be a viable option for mismatch HACT. Here, I would like to mention about the recommended regimen for job deficient patient. Big regimen is strongly recommended, fludarabine, melpharan, and low-dose TBI. In our country, we cannot use aremetuzumab because of healthcare insurance, insurance limitation, so that TBI or TLY were performed in this study. And prophylaxis for HLH Etoposide is included in conditioning regimen. Etoposide and dexamethasone palmitate are recommended for HLH treatment. And consider PTCY for HLA mismatch transplantation. Next, this shows coronoscopic images of patient before and after transplant that we are reported previous study. Upper side is pre HACT and lower side is post. Before transplant, you can see multiple ulcer after swelling and redness in colon. But after transplant, all of them totally improved to normal colon and they have maintained remission without any treatment. 
And this is a new case of coronoscopic, coronoscopic and pathogenic images before and after HFCT. The coronoscopic findings in this case also show a marked improvement. And right side is pathogenic images. Before HSCT, active inflammation with neutrophil infiltration are found. But after HSCT, active inflammation almost totally improved, and just mild mononuclear cell infiltration were found. This slide shows pediatric ulcerative colitis index score before and after HSCT, PUCAI score. PUCAI score is the objective scoring system evaluating pediatric IBD, consisting of six evaluation items, such as abdominal pain, diarrhea, bleeding, and so on. As you can see this figure, total PUCAI score remarkably improved after HSCT. Only one case exacerbated after HSCT, but this case is the patient with gut GVHD and it was difficult to distinguish job deficiency associated IBD or not. So this is the first survey that indicates job deficiency associated IBD can be cured by HSCT with statistical significance. In conclusion, Updated survey for job deficiency revealed that survival probability was out outstanding. HRA mismatch HSCT and activated HRH at the time of HSCT or the risk for successful HSCT. And post-transplant cyclophosphamide could be a viable option for HRA mismatch HSCT. And finally, Job deficiency associated IBD can be cured by HSCT. We appreciate many collaborators. And on the day of symposium, it's 3 a.m. in Japan, so I probably wouldn't be able to attend until the end. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. And this is the final slide. I would like to end this presentation with Rainbow. Thank you very much for listening.